Welcome back. In this series of slides, we're going to talk about parallel connected circuit elements, and then we're going to look specifically at parallel connected resistors. So let's get started. The definition of parallel is that two or more circuit elements are said to be in parallel if they have the same voltage across them. Not just the same amount of voltage, but the exact same voltage, the same energy. And we can see quite readily in this circuit here that if we were to define a voltage across the 120 amp source, a voltage V, then quite simply if we were to write KVL, we'd see that that same voltage V appears there, it appears there, and it appears across the 2 ohm resistor. And that can also be kind of seen just by the way the circuit's drawn. Remember, a voltage is a relative measure of energy. It's a measure of an energy level at one point with respect to something else. And so we see that all of these elements share the same wire at their positive polarity mark, and they also share the same wire at the negative polarity mark. And so if we were going to measure the energy of the blue node with respect to the yellow node, we would simply see that they all have the exact same voltage across them, and that is the voltage V. All four of these elements have the exact same energy levels across them. It's not the same, it is the same amount of energy, but it's more exactly, it is the same energy. They are at the same energy places, and so these four circuit elements are said to be connected in parallel. All right, so let's use that as an example. So maybe in this particular circuit, we'd like to find the power absorbed by all of the circuit elements. And so how would we talk, uh, tackle this? Well, since we know that they're all in parallel, we see quite easily that there's only going to be one voltage in this circuit, and that's going to be the voltage V. They all have the same voltage across them, so we only need to find one voltage. There's one voltage in this circuit. Each of these circuit elements will have their own current flowing through them, but there's only one voltage because they all have that same value across them. So if we would like to uh, find information about the circuit, we know that there's one V, so now we're really interested in finding all the I's. So what we're going to do is we're going to write K CL, and we'll write KCL for the top node. Let's write, let's write the current leaving the top node. So the current leaving the top node in this direction is simply going to be a minus 120 because it's going the opposite direction of the current source. So that's minus 120 amps. What's the current leaving the top node in this direction? Well, remember we have a voltage plus to minus the current is going down, so it's entering the positive terminal of this voltage, and so the current that's flowing down by Ohm's law and the, and the passive sign convention is going to be V over 4. What's the current leaving the top node in this direction? Well, it's simply going to be 30 amperes as given by the current source. And then what is the current leaving the top node in this direction? Again, we have the voltage plus to minus V, the current is entering the positive terminal. Passive sign convention in Ohm's law says the current going down is going to be V over 2. And KCL says all that must sum up to 0. So if you were to take this and do the algebra, then you would quickly discover that the voltage V, the voltage that is across all of these elements which are connected in parallel, is simply 120 volts. Okay, but the question was, what's the power absorbed? And why are we finding the power absorbed? Because that just gives us something convenient to work for, and also it, gets, it gives us more practice in, in solving for powers. And so let's find the power absorbed of each of the circuit elements. What is the power absorbed by the 120 amp source? Well, we have a voltage across the 120 amp source of V, which is 120 volts. All right, and what is the current directed into the positive terminal of that 120 volts? Well, it's a negative 120 amperes. And so the power being absorbed by the 120 amp source is a negative 14.4 kilowatts. Okay, and what is the power being absorbed by the 4 ohm resistor? All right, well, there's a lot of ways of doing it. Uh, we can find V times I. But we just found V. We know the V of all these guys, and so we could say the power absorbed in the 4 ohm resistor is V squared over R. Now, what is the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor? Well, it's 120 volts. So we'll simply square that and divide that by 4. And 120 squared divided by 4 is going to be 3.6 kilowatts. What's the power absorbed by the 30 amp source? 
Well, we have the voltage is 120 volts across the 30 amp source. There's 120 volts across all four of these elements because they're in parallel. And what is the current directed into the positive terminal of that 120 volts? Well, in this case, it's going to be 30 amps, a positive 30 amps directed into the positive terminal of the 120 volts. And that is going to give us, again, 3.6 kilowatts absorbed. And lastly, what is the power being absorbed by the 2 ohm resistor? All right, a lot of ways of finding it. We can find V and I for the resistor. We can find I squared R, but we have the V readily available to us, so we can do V squared over R. What's the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor? They're all in parallel, so it's 120 volts. Square that, divide it by the 2 ohms, okay? And we will see that the voltage being, the power being absorbed by the 2 ohm resistor is 7.2 kilowatts absorbed. And then as our little check, it's always good to go back and find the, when you find the powers absorbed, go back and do a check. And if you were to take all the powers absorbed and add them up, add up all the powers absorbed in the circuit, and you will find that indeed it does equal zero as we'd expect. Because everyone who's absorbing power, that power must be coming from somewhere. All the powers absorbed should add up to zero. It's a nice little check. Let's do another example then. So here we have a circuit where um, if you look at it, we can see that all of these circuit elements are again in parallel. And it's uh, the way it's drawn, it's quite easy to see. And then you work some problems, and it's not so easy to see. So you have to go, and a great thing to do is get your colored pencils out and then draw on the circuit, start drawing a wire, and draw on the wire with a color until you can't until you hit a circuit element. So we see that all of that along the orange is actually the same node. And then take a different color and start drawing on the wires until you hit circuit elements and then do that, continue doing that until you've colored all the nodes and then it's easy to see if a circuit element has the same colors on both on, on two sides, in this case we have orange on one side and kind of purple on the other, all of these elements have orange on one side and purple on the other, therefore they must all be in parallel and if they're all in parallel we can define a voltage and we'll just make it plus to minus, the polarity doesn't matter as long as you just keep track of everything it all works out in the end, a voltage plus to minus V, all right. So maybe in this case we want to find all the powers absorbed, uh, and again it's a great check. And I'll let you guys find those powers absorbed yourself. Well, I'll just get you get get you started. So how do we do this? Well, it works much the same way as the last time. Let's just simply start writing some KCL, and let's write KCL for the upper node, all right. So what is the current? leaving the node in this direction. We'll do all the currents leaving the node. The current leaving the node is minus 24 milliamps. That's 24 over 1,000. And what is the current going leaving the node in this direction? Well, remember we have a voltage plus to minus. They're all in parallel, so we get a voltage. This current is entering the positive terminal. So passive sign convention Ohm's law says that's going to be V over 6,000. That'll be the current going down. What's the current going down in this direction? Well, that's easy to read just simply off the current source. It's going the opposite direction, so it's going to be 2 minus 2 IX. That's the current. And then what is the current going down this direction? Again, the current's entering the positive terminal. So passive sign convention Ohm's law, so it's going to be V over 2,000. And KCL says that must be equal to 0. So here we go. We have one equation, but we have two unknowns. And so we need to find another equation in order to make this something that we can solve. Well, the reason we have two unknowns is because of this controlled source right here. This is a current source whose value is based on another current. And so this is what caused us to have an extra unknown in our equation. And so we need to look at this current source in order to help us figure out what the next equation should be. Well, the value of the current that flows this way is 2ix. Whatever the ix current is, 2 times that is the current that's going to flow upwards in this branch. Well, wait a minute. What is the ix current? Well, the ix current is given to us right there. ix is the current which is flowing to the left in this branch. And don't let this fool you. It's actually quite quite simple. Where does this current come from? Well, this current ix, this is an, this is an open Right? So this is zero current flowing right here because there's no it's coming from nowhere. So this current Ix must be coming in this direction. The current Ix must have come up to the 2k ohm resistor. So this gives us our second equation and we see that Ix is the current that flows to the 2k ohm resistor. We know that from Ohm's law is V over 2000.
but the current ix is the current flowing up passive sign convention and ohm's law gives us the current flowing down so we know this is going to be a negative ix is negative v over 2000 and if you solve this and how do you solve this well you can use matrix inversion back substitution kramer's rule kramer's rules are a great way of solving these if you solve when you solve this system you'll find the answer of v must be 14.4 volts. And with that, now you have the voltage V, all right? We know we got 14.4 volts across everything. And then the fact these are resistors, V squared over R, you have their power absorbed. And then you have the voltage and you have the current for the current sources and so you can find their power um, using V times I. I'll let that you do that as an exercise for yourself and you should find the powers absorbed all up to zero. So let's take the specific example of looking at a bunch of resistors, in this case two resistors that are connected in parallel. And so we have two resistors, they're connected in parallel, and I'm looking for, if possible, is there a, a single resistor, is there a single resistor REQ that I can come up with that would be equivalent to these two resistors connected in parallel. And then by that I mean if there were to be a voltage across these resistors then some kind of current would flow and there would be an IV relationship at this point. Well if I want these two circuits to be equivalent that is I need to put the same V here and I would expect the same I to flow. So if I can get the same IV relationship in this circuit to appear in this circuit, then I'd say that these two circuits are equivalent. So what I'm looking for is the value of REQ such that that will occur. All right. So let's see if we can figure a way to do that. All right. So let's dive into this. So we know that we have, if there's a current that flows here, and I want to call that I, then we can simply see that we have some current, it's going to split, some of the current's going to go this way, some of the current's going to go through R1, we'll call that I1, some of the current's going to go this way through R2, we'll call that I2, all right, and of course this current I that existed is going to give rise to a voltage, and then so if I were to put that same current here I, I would expect it to give rise to the same voltage, all right, so I need the I's, I need this I to equal this I, and I need this V to equal this V. All right. So now this gets a little bit easier to solve if we do Ohm's law in the alternate form. And so remember, V equals I R, but we also know that I equals V times G. So let's kind of kick it into that form, and I think it makes this a little bit easier to solve. So R1 could also be written as G1. R2 can be written as G2, and of course I'm looking for an equivalent resistance that could be written as GEQ. All right, and we see from over here on on the left-hand circuit, we know from KCL that I must be equal to I1 plus I2, conservation of mass, KCL. All right, and then we what is I1? I1 is the current flowing down through this conductance G1. Well, Ohm's law tells me that I1 is going to be the voltage across this conductance. Well, they're all in parallel, so it's V, all right, times G1. And the current flowing through this conductance, I2, is going to be that voltage, they're all in parallel, so it's V times G2. So I see that I, the current I, is VG1 plus VG2. All right, and we can factor that V out, and then we got V times G1 plus G2. Well, if you go to the right-hand circuit, let's, let's kind of do the same thing over here. We have a current I which is flowing. That current I, which is flowing in the right-hand circuit, which has to be equal to this I, is simply going to be V times G equivalent. Okay, and if we bring it down to here, V times G equivalent, we'll see that these two circuits will indeed be give the same answer if G equivalent is equal to G1 plus G2. So what we learn is that G equivalent, the, the resistor I'm looking for, has a conductance which is G1 plus G2. Okay, 
Well, look, but but we want this to answer in terms of resistance. Resistance. Okay, then we can do this because we see. Remember, what is GEQ? If I'm looking for REQ, all right, REQ is simply one over GEQ because resistance is the reciprocal of conductance. But then, what did we find that GEQ is? Well, GEQ is G1 plus G2. Well, let's make that in terms of resistance. G1 is simply one over R1, and G2 is 1 over R2. And so this is the result we're looking for, and that is I can find a single resistor, which is equivalent to the parallel combination of two resistors. And what equivalent resistor is that? Well, it is 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, or as I like to say, when you have two parallel resistors, the equivalent resistance is the reciprocal, the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. The reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. Well, if you take that and extend that to an arbitrary number of resistors, and you can do the analysis the exact same way, you're just going to have more terms. In this case, you're going to have n terms. So if we're going to take n resistors and we're going to connect them in parallel, we have R1, R2, R3, dot, 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 all up to Rn. They're all connected in parallel. Well, from that, we they're in parallel. There's only one voltage. We can define it to be V. And then you can do the exact same analysis. That is, you find all these currents. You use I equals VG, just like we just did. Now you have n terms instead of 2. You find the equivalent in conductance you need. Then you convert it back into resistances, and then you get the result. And the result is there is a single resistor, a single resistor, REQ, I can create the single resistor REQ, and if I put a voltage here, V, it's going to give rise to a current right here of I. If I put the same voltage V on this resistor, it's going to give rise to the exact same current, and that happens when that the equivalent resistance REQ is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocal resistances. And so the, it's actually a much more complicated looking formula than it really is. It's the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. Or if you do this in conductance form, you also know that G equivalent is going to be equal to the sum of the G's if you want to keep it in conductance form. All right, so now you know how to combine together a bunch of resistors in parallel. All right, and we've seen how to combine resistors in series. And with that, if we have resistors that are both in, you know, all kinds of resistors that are in series and parallel and all mixed up, we can now combine them into something simpler as well. And we'll see that in the next lecture. Thanks for listening.